Hello, and welcome to this very scientific episode of the Arctic Reptile Ranch. So much so that I've had to break it down into multiple videos. So saddle up, it's time to science. Before getting too deep into the science of this series, let me go ahead and apologize for being gone for about three months. But just like most of you, life happens. Stuff gets in the way of my YouTube hobby. Uh, I've been taking classes, working on a doctorate. That takes up a lot of my weekend time. Uh, I have a, a full-time job, of course, and that takes up a good bit of my time. It's a full-time job. But if you look around, you'll notice that there's a lot less clutter than normal, and all of my magnets are gone. That's because we're in the early stages of packing, because I found out where the Air Force is sending me next, and that's Phoenix, Arizona. I'm heading down to Luke Air Force Base. The tortoises are going to love it, but the Arctic Reptile Ranch is going to thaw out a lot. I'd like to thank the subscribers that stuck with me through my minor pause, and I'd like to welcome any new subscribers that are just meeting me and seeing what's happening up here in Alaska. Back to science. Today, I'm going to discuss lighting at the far end of the spectrum, both infrared and ultraviolet. I'm also going to show you the bulbs that I like to use in most of my enclosures, but I'm also going to show you some bulbs that are available at most pet stores and my preference available through Amazon. We're going to begin this illuminating multi-part series with the wavelengths that are super short but high on energy, ultraviolet wavelengths. Now, ultraviolet, or we call them UV wavelengths, exist in a form that we humans and most mammals can't perceive. But you know who can perceive them? Tortoises and turtles. Tortoises and turtles can see in the UVA spectrum of lighting. Another animal that can see in the ultraviolet spectrum are honeybees and bumblebees. It allows them to pick out the perfect flowers that they want to pull the pollen from to make honey. So as interesting as all of that is, why is something that we can't even see so important and why is so much time spent studying it and marketing it? Well, for tortoises, receiving UV is the only natural way for them to grow a solid and strong shell. Like humans, colonians, tortoises and turtles, have cholesterol within their bodies and in particular in their skin. So UVB takes that cholesterol and converts it into pre-vitamin D3. Heat they receive from the sun then takes that pre-vitamin D3 and converts it into full-on vitamin D3. This is carried to the liver where it's converted into another form and then it passes to the kidneys where it's turned into a hormone. Now this hormone in particular is what carries the calcium through the bloodstream and brings it to where it needs to go. Calcium, we need calcium to make our muscles work. Every time your muscle contracts, calcium is what's doing it. Nerve conduction, every time your heart beats, every time you have a thought, every time you feel something, calcium ions are being transferred. But most importantly, for tortoises and turtles, that calcium is being brought throughout the bloodstream and deposited in their bones, and that's essential for proper growth. So if you remove any part of that very important chain, it's very likely that your tortoise is going to have some kind of metabolic bone disorder, or at the very, very, very least, uh, some form of improper growth. Now, even if you were to feed your tortoise pure chips of calcium every day for its entire life, without getting vitamin D3, you might as well be feeding it air if you're not giving it all the pieces of that. In fact, this cycle is similar in uh, most reptiles, particular herbivorous, plant eaters, and insectivores, like bearded dragons and frilled dragons and water dragons. If you want to know more about the role that UV plays in your reptile's life, this issue of Reptiles, the January-February 2017 issues, has an amazing article written by Dr. Francis Baines about UV lighting and how it affects reptiles, not just through their metabolism, but also through their daily habits. Uh, I'll put two links down in the description that has a digital link to this article and another link to a video that somebody posted. It was of a seminar that Dr. Baines conducted uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Before I move on to seeing the lighting that I use in my reptiles, I'm going to show you a really handy tool that you can purchase on Amazon and probably directly from the company. Now, 
This is a solar meter 6.5 UV index meter. It measures UV in the UV index. And based on the number that you get, it has a little conversion chart at the top that tells you where in the Ferguson zones your UV index falls. The Ferguson zones represent the average amount of UV light in a habitat. Habitats that range from a darkened rainforest where there's a lot of coverage, very shady, all the way to the full on sun of the high desert. Now, since I don't have a lot of natural sunlight that I can provide for these guys up here in Alaska, and it's definitely dangerous to put them outside, and also it gets too cold at night even in the middle of June, I need to use artificial lighting to convert that cholesterol on their skin into pre-vitamin D. So it's time to use this little gadget and see how much UV my shelled herd are receiving. Down here is one of my leopard tortoise enclosures. These guys are growing really fast, but they're still a little bit young, so they're still kept in an enclosed chamber. Probably just after we get to Arizona, these guys will transition into a full open air enclosure like the rest of the tortoises that are about the same size. I'm using two different bulbs over here. I'm using a Reptisun high output T5, right here, made by ZoomEd. And up here, I went out and got something that I used to use, and an Exoterra 13 watt fluorescent bulb. Now, I switched primarily because of the way that these are designed. They're one bulb, so it's less wattage, and when you have this many, you gotta look out for the power bill. And these were touted as being able to put off more UV at practical distances compared to some of the compact fluorescent bulbs. So let's have a look and see how much UV these are putting out. If I turn this on, you can see I'm getting a reading of zero. That's because this glass, as thin it is, as it is, blocks out UVA and UVB light. So when you have your tortoise set up and you're like, oh, well, he gets plenty of light because he's next to a window. Between your window and your aquarium, your tortoise or turtle is receiving zero, zero UV light, or zero UVA and UVB. So now, let me go ahead and open this up. And even though there's a screen here, you're gonna see that this is still gonna register. So this is showing me that these guys are getting a fair amount of, of UV light. And when I move this down, you know, it fluctuates some, but it keeps these guys in the, in the zone two of the Ferguson zone. Now, leopard tortoises, uh, are said to inhabit naturally zone two and zone three. While this may not give them full up into zone three, it's definitely giving them the dose of UV they need to break that cholesterol down into pre-vitamin D3. So that was pretty amazing. Now, let's see what the light that's not supposed to be as amazing as this puts out for us. At the same height, it's putting off pretty close to the same amount of UV. So what I've seen is even through the screen, this type of bulb is more effective than a lot of people will tell you. Now, both of these also, something that makes it more effective, they have reflectors at the top. So all the light that, that's going up is being put back down. So essentially you're doubling the amount of UV being shown down at your animals. So what are some of the benefits of UV light? Well, I mentioned before, proper shell growth. This is Contrast. She was born in November of 2016. So she's about a little bit over a year and a half old and you can see, look how big she is. She's well into the 400 gram range and she has a great shell, nice and solid. Her tank mate, Multiscoot, is just as solid and growing just as well as she is. So let's move on. We're gonna have a look at Titan, the radiated tortoise. So here we are having a look at Titan. I'm using different lights in his cage. I'm using another ZoomEd T5 10.0 output light over here. Back here, I'm using LED lights. And you can see he's the been busy munching away on the grass that we have in the cage. So let's have a look at what level of UV he's receiving right where he's at while he eats. At 
his shell height, he's receiving between two and a half and three on the UV index. So that puts him into the second and third Ferguson zone. These guys, where they live in Madagascar, they might live in the open plains along the southwest coast, where it's a uh, tidal zone, but they also live in scrubby thicket forest, where there's not a lot of leafy trees. So these guys do receive a lot of light most of the day when they're not trying to hide <clears throat> in slightly thicker vegetation. But you can see, just him sitting here eating and drinking his water, he's getting a great dose of radiation, of UV radiation. So I'm gonna put this under what these are called a full spectrum LED light, and we'll see how much UV they put off. Exactly zero. These LED lights, although they're, they're designed for plant growth and they're touted as full spectrum, they're full visible spectrum. These are not giving off any UV light in a tiny, tiny smidgen of IR light. So why do I have them in there if they're really not giving UV? Because they're a different Kelvonic temperature. When you go into a house, sometimes it looks bright yellow or it might look a bright blue color. Well, those are different temperatures. And by adding different temperatures of light in here, they're not touch temperature. It's your, the spectrum of light that you're giving off. You're creating a more natural lighting effect. <clears throat> My heat lamps give off a more yellow, orange glow. So I'm trying to recreate all the colors the sun gives off. And you can see, for him, it seems to be doing great. He has great new growth down there along the bottom of his scoots. He's grazing naturally, wakes up in the morning, walks out, and just gets to doing what tortoises do. And he wants to come over and see me and probably have a little elevator action. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to move on and look at Andromeda, my hefty little female star tortoise. Here we are down with Andromeda, my largest female star tortoise. I've had her for just about a decade now, and you can see she is growing amazingly. She has beautiful colors, she's super dense. I, I joke around saying I think she has cow DNA inside of her because of how much she eats and how fast she grows and how fat she is. But realistically, she's just a very healthy tortoise. Now, you'll notice that the lights in here, there's a pretty big gap between where the lights are and where she is. So let's see how much UV she's getting from the lights that I'm using in here. Wait, look at that. There's zero UV coming out of these lights. All the way up and down. I mean, is there any UV coming out of her heat lamp? No, there is absolutely no UV coming out of her heat lamp. So in the absence of UV, how is she so healthy? How does she have such a solid shell? Well, I said the only natural way for the body to make D3 is through UVB exposure. But there's another way to give your animals D3 so that they can carry calcium throughout their body. I use calcium supplements that have D3 included. So for the animals that are not getting a direct UV light, they're still getting D3. And as you can see, over the course of a decade, that's worked out pretty well for her. While the best way is to use is, well, really the best way is to use natural sunlight. The second best way is to use an artificial UV. In the absence of those, if you give them a, something with a D3 supplement in it, you're going to get very similar or even the same results. Regardless of your preference as to what source of D3 you're going to give them, you can't argue with the results because here she is. I've shown you the lighting that I use to simulate the sunlight because, again, up here in Alaska, we don't get a lot of direct sunlight. In fact, I'll show you how much UV exposure we get from the sun up here on a completely sunny day with no clouds. And we'll see exactly how much UV the sun is giving Alaska. Currently it's about 62, 63 degrees out. So now that we're outside, the sun is directly above me, and we're going to get a reading. In the sun in Alaska, 
we come up with about 2.5, 2.3. Our UV index up here in Alaska is in the low twos, which puts us in the Ferguson zone of two, even on a completely bright and sunny day. As UV technology lighting has advanced, I've tried to keep up with it and tried to research as much as I can to give most of them the best that is on the market. Now, in the past, that hasn't always been a possibility, which is why I relied more heavily on the supplemented D3, or the supplemented calcium with D3 in it. But over time, I'll probably convert every single enclosure to a more natural light. What I've definitely focused on, of course, is giving them natural lighting colors so that the green looks green to them. It doesn't look a weird color. And that's very important when it comes to their appetites because they're very visually stimulated and then they'll go up and they'll sniff it and taste it. But at first, it has to look appetizing before these guys are going to eat it. I've done a lot of reading on natural habitats of all these animals. So does that mean that you should go out and research your animal and find out what Ferguson zone it lives in and give it that amount of UV all the time? Well, I mentioned before, research, that's great, but you may not need to give it all of that UV exposure constantly because even again in the high desert, those reptiles, you know, tortoise, turtles, lizards, they don't spend a lot of time out in the sun, they'll get cooked. What you need to do is give them areas and the ability to regulate for themselves. Their bodies tell them what they need. Just like sometimes you, you want chocolate, sometimes you just want a sandwich because your body knows what, it's need, what it needs to stay healthy. As it relates to regulating, another important aspect of uh, reptile lives is thermal regulating. The ability to go from warm to cool to semi-warm as they want. And that's going to lead us directly into the second part of this series. We're going to have a look at how I heat everybody, which up here in Alaska is no small feat. Thanks again for visiting the Arctic Reptile Ranch. I appreciate all the subscribers that stuck with me during my absence, and I look forward to meeting all of you new subscribers who find me after this video or another video. So stay tuned and go to the next video where we see how I keep it hot up here in the Arctic Reptile Ranch.